Light travels in waves. Scientists use an idea called wavelength to describe these waves. Some light waves have long wavelengths, while others have short wavelengths. Lights of different wavelengths appear to us as different colors. Today we're going to be making a landscape painting, and we're going to try to show the relationship between light and objects. We're also going to try to show how light reflects off of objects. The relationship between sunlight and colors is really common in Impressionist paintings. First, we're going to select the oil pastel option in the menu so we can begin a process called underpainting. In art, underpainting is the first layer of paint applied to a canvas. The underpainting is a base for all of the following layers of paint. Underpainting is extremely important in the final image because it will directly affect the outcome of light in the image. In traditional painting, the idea is the same and underpainting is one of the most important elements of making a painting. The goal of the colors we choose for underpainting in this first stage is to give light to the colors we will be using next. In order to do this, we need to increase the value of the oil pastel tool. If we were doing a traditional painting, we'd be using a wider brush. The landscape in this painting has two dominant colors, blue for the sky and orange for the ground. We will underpaint with these two colors. Each season gives off its own light, and so that means each season has its own characteristic colors. In this case, it's the end of summer, and the grass is quite burnt by the sun, so it has less green and more orange and yellow. As we add new colors to the painting, we shouldn't completely cover the colors that we previously painted. Those colors will be used for creating depth and dimension to the painting later on when we finish it. In our previous tutorials on lines, light, and shadows, and especially about perspective, we learned that objects that appear closer to us on the canvas are darker and larger, while objects that appear further away on the canvas are smaller and lighter. Now, we'll learn how to apply those skills to our landscape painting. When we're finished with the underpainting, we can start figuring out the main elements of this landscape. The main elements we'll want to add to this painting are the road, the tree line, the hills, and the sky. Let's start by sketching the layout of the trees, road, and hills with broad strokes. You don't need to get super detailed with it. The purpose of sketching is just to get some idea of where we want things to be at. By choosing darker shades of the same color from the color wheel, let's paint the part of the road closest to us. Then, we can use lighter shades of the same color for the part of the road that's further away from us. The road we're looking at here is a good example of perspective, because the part of the road that is closer to us is wider, and the part of the road that's farthest from us is almost invisible because it narrows. At this stage, when we figured out where we want stuff to be, we need to consider the lighting in the painting and what needs to be lit and how so it looks natural. The colors in this landscape have a complementary relationship, meaning they are balanced by using opposite colors on the color wheel. The complementary color relationships are red and green, blue and orange, and yellow and purple. Next, let's add some shadows cast by the trees on the road. The shadows are painted in a blue-violet color using the transparency setting. When you look at colors, and when painting colors, it's important to look at objects in nature in an artistic way. We can try to see what the main colors are in the object while also trying to figure out what the more subtle colors are too. Impressionist painters like Claude Monet or Vincent van Gogh are well known for using almost all the colors of the rainbow in their paintings. White light is a combination of all colors in the color spectrum. 
it has all the colors of the rainbow. This gives us a lot of freedom when painting and deciding what colors to use next. For example, we can add other colors to the shadows on the road. Later on, we can work on the leaves and the tree trunks too. The position of the shadows in this painting shows us that the time of day might be late afternoon or early morning and that the sun is on the right. That is why the right side of the trees and tree trunks will be darker and the left side will be lighter. Next, let's add some semi-transparent strokes of different colors to the trees, to the sky, and to the ground. We're trying to show that there's light in the painting. Now that we've added some colors on the tree trunks, we can enhance the yellow and orange even more. In the middle of the trees, we can use semi-transparent strokes of greenish blue, which creates a transition between the warm orange color and the dark blue color. This intensifies the shadow of the tree. We can also add some shades of green or blue to the ground and blend them with the yellow or orange colors on the ground. This will give us a semi-transparent mix of colors. Mixing semi-transparent colors will then give us new colors. One super important element that we can explore here is the sky. Because the sky is bright, it contrasts with the trees, hills, and other little details on the ground. The sky also highlights the details of the trees. The strokes we made to the sky should be as small as possible. The smaller and more evenly dense these colors are, the more realistic lighting we'll have in our painting. Your goal should be to paint with as many colors as possible in these types of paintings. Without using a wide variety of colors, it's pretty hard to get a good result. The richness and variety of colors is the base for the richness and variety of the painting. In the last phase of our work, when we get to the trees by the road, if we made any mistakes with the branches, we can correct them.
Now we're done! Today we use the oil pastel tool. We were constantly adjusting its values in the right panel using these settings, diameter, pressure, and opacity. By changing the shades of the same color in the color wheel, our goal was to achieve a variety of shades and colors. Thanks for watching and happy painting!